Hey everyone, this is John Schneider with Fargo 3D Printing here at CES 2017, and I'm here in the Zmorph booth with Chemic, who is the CEO of Zmorph. So, Chemic, it sounds like you've had a really good 2016. Can you give us a little, uh, little insight into what happened for you in 2016, and and what you have coming up in 2017? Yeah, 2016 uh, actually started in uh, at the beginning of second quarter for us when we introduced this machine, which is Zmorph 20 SX. Uh, it's a completely re-engineered model. Uh, and it was uh, it has been a great success so far. Uh, the, the machine is, is not a 3D printer really. It's more like a robot that enables you to uh, manufacture objects. And uh, the, the easiest way to explain this is to show all these tool heads that we have in here. Uh, basically, the tool heads are uh, exchangeable. So by removing one tool head and by putting the other one in, you, base, you, you, you simply reconfigure the machine to be something completely different. So, so, we can, so Zmorph can be a 3D printer, it can be a CNC uh, milling machine, uh, it can be a laser cutter, uh, it, it can extrude ceramics or even food. Uh, and so, so all of these things are exchangeable. The tables are also exchangeable. Uh, and, and, and that's the that's the clue uh, of, of the project, right? Uh, we also, it, you know, some people ask like, okay, if you can do everything, that means you, you don't do any of these single things in a perfect way. It's not really true because we, we try to be as good as possible with, uh, for example, printing. We are also bringing a lot of innovation. So, so we have uh, multicolor uh, printing with, uh, uh, with uh, color mixing built in. And also our software can map any object, any STL object with JPEG texture, which is an exa the example you can see here. Um, so I, I guess a little bit on that dual extrusion. So how does your dual extruder work? Is it two strands that get mixed in a single chamber, or does it switch between two different nozzles? Yeah, there is no switching. It just can uh, extrude each one of those simultaneously. and. Uh, Mixing occurs in the chamber, and then we have extrusion. So, so simultaneous extrusion of two materials. But uh, the hardware is not everything. We uh, we realized that after a lot of research, uh, the, the the point is that the software does most of the work. It, it needs to cleverly mix them, and you know does the uh, flushing of the material. You know, so the, so we have some cleaning occurring around the object. And so not only we can we can print uh, texture mapped uh, JPEG mapped uh, objects, but we can also print uh, gradient prints, uh, and and also we can print uh, normal uh, two material prints like here. You can see PVA, uh, water soluble support. Uh, we also do architectural prints, uh, and here is an example of color mapping again. Uh, Image mapping. So, so, so for a print like that, the one you're just holding that has sort of the image on it, what sort of layer height is that printing at? Because that's got to be it's got to be pretty thin layers to be able to to be able to manage that. Not really. I mean, we usually use 0.2 layers uh, because the amount of cleaning that happens in between uh, color changes is moderate. If, uh, if you if you go with lower layers, then you need to do a little bit more of uh, the the. Cle uh, the, the cleaning wall needs to be a little bit thicker, uh, but still, you know, it depends on the user. We we usually recommend 0.2 because it's most uh, optimal for uh, material usage. So for the uh, for the color changeover, do you have a separate like a purge tower or a purge wall, or does the color changing happen within the it's, within it's the part? The that is actually built around the object. Uh, however, with uh, with these models, uh, sorry, with with these, we have the uh, the cleaning wall is uh, is part of the object. Here. So a vase like this, you can print just as you can see it. Uh, we are actually printing one of those here. So, so that leads to less uh, less material waste from the cleaning process. Yes, there is less material waste. So back to the uh, the exchangeability of the uh, the heads and the beds. So how how difficult is it to change from one tool head over to another tool head? Oh, I actually did the demo uh, two days ago during uh, TechCrunch uh, Hardware Battlefield, and we were doing that on stage. That's like thirty seconds each. So you, you remove one, you you put uh, like a CNC for example. That takes like thirty seconds to one minute max. Uh, there's one screw that mounts it and, and then you just pull the plugs. 
So then on the software side, does the uh, does the toolpath generation for all of the different heads happen in the same uh, same piece of software? Yeah, uh, we have our own software called Voxelizer, and it's uh, it, it contains all the workflows. So in, so th that's basically a one environment that enables the user to do all these things. So CNC milling, laser cutting, image etching, uh, and multi-material printing, uh, and more actually. Very cool. So what do you see coming up for 2017? Any new types of tool heads? Any, uh, I guess, any other uh, modifications to the printers coming up? Yeah, well, that's the point. We actually, uh, what you can see here is a platform. Uh, and you can use it in many ways. So we're coming up with new tool heads to actually enrich the experience of uh, current users. So whoever gets the machine uh, can be sure that, you know, within months uh, to come there will be more functionality unveiled uh, on the same hardware basis right and we also provide uh, software uh, upgrades so there are currently we're thinking about three uh, new tool heads uh, that would be uh, yeah uh, laser cutter uh, four material extruder uh, and and five axis uh, uh, manipulator Actually, 5-axis 1 is going to be reintroduced because we already had it in our offer, and now we're redesigning it, and it's going to be re reintroduced to the market uh, for educational purposes, so like, you know, for people to, to learn how to program 5-axis robots, but it also may have more uses. So this printer, is it, it's out now, it, it's shipping now, and what, what's the price point on it? Uh, anywhere between uh, 2600 and 3800 depending on configuration. So depending on how many tool heads we choose to have. So the basic set is 2600 and, and the full set with all of them is uh, $3,800. Yeah. So one more thing about the interchangeability, when you're talking about the different beds that you're using. So I think the, the extruder or the different tool heads make sense, but what are the different bed types that you have? Yeah, we can actually see that here. This is a, a heated bed, uh, perfect for ABS prints. It may go with temperature uh, technically up to 140 degrees, but well, we recommend only one, say, 25 max. Uh, for ABS, it's perfect if we just use 100 degrees. Uh, the this is all in closed chamber, so uh, protects the temperature of the air around the objects. Uh, over there we can see a, a CNC milling table that's made of plywood and that's perfect for, for mounting the uh, wood or any other material that needs to be milled. We also use it for laser etching uh, and laser cutting. Right. We also have uh, two other types of tables. We, we also have a bigger uh, table as well, so, so there's a lot uh, to choose from. All right. Well, I think that's all the questions that I have. Uh, it's been really great learning about uh, learning about Zmorph and seeing what's coming up. It looks like 2016 was a great year, and 2017 hopefully is another good one. Thank you all very right. much. Okay. And uh, yeah, if you want to find out more, go to zmorph3d.com. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. I'm gonna get your badge just so I make sure. I might have to get that off of. I don't know those characters, so. I, I, uh, wait a second. No, 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 no. Oh, do you have a? Uh, like they, they, they put my like. Oh, you're like real. Like real. Not